Hey everybody, welcome to my new Rotex series, Infiltration. So we're going to do a quick uh, start here. Um, I'll explain to you why I've been away from playing Rotex for so long once we get into the game, but uh, let's just start off with a new campaign. And we're going to leave uh, Friendly Fire on. We're going to change our parts from Mech Assembly down to 3, and there's a reason for that, I'll tell you that in a minute. Um, starting Planet, we're going to start off in Clan Space, because we are playing the clans in this one, so we'll take that. Uh, I'm just going to burn through this real quick. Mech recovery chance. I'm just going to take pretty much my standard, uh, what I normally do when I when, when I when I start this. We're going to leave the uh, enemy force strength on as normal. Right now, we'll probably crank it up a little later. But uh, difficulty variance. We're going to go to three, uh, just to get some good variance in difficulty for uh, missions, which we can take. Uh, contract payment. It's going to be normal. Uh, salvage is normal. Commander experience. We always put a ten thousand because the commander should have a little bit more experience than everybody else. Advanced Mech Warriors, we don't want to find very many of them. And Ronin Higher Chance, we're going to turn that down to zero. I like using the stock uh, Mech Pilots. So, but we're going to change up the Pilots to system to seven. Uh, most likely we're not going to be hiring that many, but when we do hire one, I want to get one that I kind of like anyway. Uh, Mech Warrior uh, Progression, we're going to change this to slow. This is how I normally play, just to get them a, a slower start. Lethality is going to be normal. Mech Base Speed will stay normal. Mech Bay Armor Speed, normal. All this stuff is normal. With the exception of starting money, we need to go to the max amount. We're not going to have that much when we actually start. And you'll see once we start the game why that is. But we're going to put our starting money up at this value right now and start the game. Yes, Commander. All right. So uh, we came from the deep periphery, obviously, since we're at the Clanners. And we went, uh, we were exiled. Uh, and uh, actually no we, we're gonna change this to we struck out on our own uh, Standing by. not that I care about these two I just that this is gonna fit more with what we're uh, what we're doing here um, we fell into the life frontier freelancer uh, actually we, we, should we go pilot yes, uh, I think we're at frontier freelancer is probably more applicable I think so let's go that route um, and then we're gonna edit our name and appearance um, going to go with the AI, and we're just going to call ourselves Infiltrator. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with Hansloth. That's good enough. And let's customize our. Oh, sorry, we're going to change our portrait. Uh, where is the dude we normally take? Some are here. They're all jumbled up now. Um, nope. Very similar. There we go. There's our dude. All right. Now let's choose colors. Let's go with uh, what's a good infiltration color? Red. Red. Well, we did red and black with covert ops, and we didn't get very far with that. So let's go red and black again with this one. Uh, we want to put lighting at. One, two. Two is a little moodier, I think. Camera, we want to be looking straight ahead. And let's remove the tattoos, because we're not totally scarred yet. Oh, that's a tattoo. Sorry, I'm talking about uh, scar. Uh, let's get rid of these scars. Good enough. And I think that's how we'll leave it. Uh, blue eyes, yeah, that's good enough. Let's save this. And let's start. Welcome, Commander. Okay, here we are. So we are in clan space. Let's change. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to uh, here. Let's customize our company a little bit. And we're just going to call ourselves the infiltrators once this comes up. Come on. There we go. Just leave it like that. And what is a good decal infiltrators uh, let's see here I don't want it to be too uh, flamboyant I don't think um, that's ice helium I think isn't it something like that uh, let's see here huh <laughs> guess if you want to be a pirate um, I don't want to take something that's known already as something else. Um, 
We used that one already, I think. This was one we used for Covert Ops. But you know what? I kind of like that one. So let's take that again. We, we are going to go with the black and red, so we might as well go with this, this symbol again. Um, primary colors. We're going to go black, I think, as the primary, and a red as the secondary. So let's go black, secondary, but let's go with a more of a fluorescent red here. Something along that line, I think. And then the accent, uh, maybe like an orange. Maybe we leave it the orange. Actually, you know what? Let's do this orange here. Let's save that. Then we can go check our mechs out and see how that looks. All right, cool. Now, uh, barracks. Oh yeah, see, so you notice here that this kind of tells you I've already loaded the game in a bit. I did try and get Covert Ops running again, but no matter what I did to launch a mission, it would just hang every time I launched the mission. So that's the reason why I scrapped Covert Ops. That's the only reason why I scrapped it. I was going to continue, but what can you do, right? So this is, but since I updated Rogue Tech, right, I updated to the most recent version. I don't know whether that has something to do with it or what the deal is, but here we go, right? Uh, okay, Mech Warriors. Let's have a look. We are going to flush everybody out. Uh, like I normally do. I, I know we, we, we kept... Oh, man. Helian, really? Uh, we're going to flush... Let's dismiss you. And you. I think we will keep one pilot. Maybe Helian. Huh. Paladin, Ronin. A striker, uh, thirty-six thousand, eh? What was Helian's at? Thirty-three-six. I'm free. Yes, Thirty-one-two. Ah, Helian, I think is probably the best. She's got red hair, so why not? One of our colors. One of our colors. All right, Paladin. See ya, buddy. And we're not going to spend any points at all Commander. to erase our skills up. And I'll show you why in a second here. So let's go to Mech Bay real quick. Let's have a look at the mechs we start with. Don't know what to expect here. So we got a Prana, Jenner 2C, Kid Fox, a Flea. Wait, how, how is a Flea? Oh, it's a Firefly, sorry. I don't know why. I see FFL and I think it's Flea, but I don't know why. And a Mongoose. Okay, well... Could be better, I guess. So Piranha, I think that's actually pretty good for the colors for the Piranha. Let's have a look at the colors for the Jenner 2C. It looks like it's the SRM4 and SRM6 streaks. Okay. All right, well, at least we won't waste ammo with this guy. Uh, let's see what the colors are like here. And yeah, not big on the checkerboard. Actually, that's kind of cool. I'm not going to spend too much time on the colors, but... That's pretty good, I think. I like the glowing cab here. All right, Kit Fox. What do you got on you here? Uh, we got a Gauss rifle. Okay. A pair of ER mediums. All right, that's not bad. Fire support mech. Cool. Um, and I think the colors look fine on this one. All right. And we got the... Oh, my God. I, can, I almost call it a flea. The Firefly. What do we got on you, buddy? Small, uh, two smalls and a medium, LRM5, another medium, another small. Wow, that's a lot of lasers. That is a lot of lasers. Case, double heat sink kit, you're de definitely going to need that with all those lasers. All right, um, what's your colors look like? Let's see if we can find something a little better here. It's so hard when they're small to be able to tell what the color scheme is like. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go with that. Mongoose, we're definitely not going with this color scheme. I'll check your weapons out. Wow. <laughs> it's like, take the best of the worst, I guess. Uh, geez, really? Uh, okay. There you go. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Let's get those racing stripes on you. Why not? 
All right. Someone's got to work on the... Uh, <laughs> I can't go with that. There's just no way. Uh, sure. Well, maybe not. Nice big red target in the back. Let's go this route. All right, good enough. All right, so there's our max. Now, what do you got on you? Uh, hmm. Royal heat sink kit, medium. Beagle probe, another medium. Two mediums, huh? That's it, eh? So I guess you're my. Oh, an ER large. Okay. And a small, so not too bad, not too too bad. Okay, well, well, we can work with this. All right. So the reason why, if we go back to the Argo real quick, so the reason why we're choosing three Mac parts is for the first um, uh, few episodes or so, we're not going to choose any Mac components, any Mac parts out of the salvage that we get. We're going to just let the dice roll on what we get and once we get the first three mechs into play whatever they end up being once we build our first three mechs um, we'll have two full lances of mechs and that's what we're going to use as our two lances to start with um, and then we'll start I'll probably crank up the pieces to either five pieces per mech or eight pieces per mech after that and then we'll be able to choose our own um, but for now I just kind of want to let it be as random as possible but get the mechs as quickly as possible which is why I'm, I, I'm going with three parts in this particular series so let's have a look at the star map real quick. Um, not going to worry too much about of the star map in this particular series. As you can see, the Tortuga Dominions have somehow taken like a crap ton of, of space. They own the laneways all the way to clan space. So I don't know what's going on in the actual uh, uh, inner sphere with the war and stuff, but it doesn't look like the clans are uh, actually doing very much. Jay Falcons here. Looks like there's a lot of quietness going on. So, uh, not that that matters. We are going to do uh, something interesting. Us Hanseatic League still. These guys are still... Yeah. So, the idea for this series was that we were going to... Um, like, I had this planned. I was going to do it running with two lances with basically two different series or two different uh, games running side by side where we kind of go back and forth between the two games making it seem like both lances were on the same dropship but since we can deploy two lances at once now that's we don't need to do that anymore so uh, what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to be uh, spending a little time in clan space until we can get a few clan parts um, and get those mechs that we I talked about getting those three new the three other mechs um, whatever they end up being um, and then once we have that done we are going to do the infiltration part of this series and the whole my whole uh, part uh, thought was right is it right here no it's one of these planets right here Clan Blurrock Niops is it here Rebel Astrakhazi is here somewhere Ramita is it here there it is so the plan was to go to Astrakhazi and the idea was is that we were plan of a we were part of a uh, um, a clan unit or one of several clan units sent ahead of the main invasion forces, um, and the idea was that the our our um, these individual units were sent ahead to find the old Star League bases uh, that were left behind and buried uh, to make sure they were still intact. Number one. Uh, number two, th if the inner sphere had discovered them, to somehow either destroy them or um, recapture them in some way. Um, but just to, to, the idea was to go through and um, basically find out the status of all those bases. So my th that was going to be the idea of the, the series. But um, where we were going to pick up was um, the our unit had kind of come along this way through um, uh, the periphery space and ended up at Astrakhazi. And while we were here, a civil war broke out um, and different factions around the area, the Free World's League, uh, Magist uh, the Magistry of Cannabis, sorry, all these knobs confederation, they had uh, basically descended on Astrakhazi because it was an independent world to try and keep the peace and all that. And while we were on the surface, the, there's a rumor about Astrakhazi that there's a large Star League uh, catch of uh, weapons and, and stuff here. No one has ever found it. No one's ever found any clues to it actually being there. But the idea is what we knew where it was. We were gonna, we were showing up to, to secure it or destroy it. Um, and while we were there, uh, civil war broke out. 
uh, most of the units from this our our uh, our unit were ended up on the surface. Um, they got trapped there. There was a, a big fight, and the remaining units that were left on the ship, which was a, a handful of clan like uh, lighter lighter clan mechs that were left behind on the ship because we weren't gonna, going to use those until the actual invasion started. Um, that was all we were left with. Um, and when uh, the Free Worlds League showed up, uh, we were forced to jump away because we just couldn't contend with them. And we had to leave the re remainder of the uh, force on the surface, which then destroyed the uh, uh, Starling facility so that it couldn't fall into anybody else's hands. So we were left with a handful of mechs, uh, a couple of uh, broken dropships, a... Um, um, a uh, jump capable ship where which I was going to say the uh, Argo was jump capable so we were stuck with our, our crippled jump capable st ship and we had to try to either continue the mission or continue along that was going to be the storyline so we're going to kind of roughly do that same kind of storyline so once we get enough for two lances we're going to jump out to here uh, which is why I took the large amount of sea bills to start with because as you can see it's going to take uh, 1.9 Two five million just in jump and 246 days to get there, which is eight months of travel. So I need eight months of sea bills plus two million sea bills for travel costs just to get here. So uh, I'm going to avoid spending the sea bills that we do have, uh, with the exception of repairing max. So we're probably going to need, mm, I don't know, like that's why I want to make sure our our pilots are really low level and stuff before we go, uh, because the higher level the pilots are the more cost it's going to be. Right now if we go to finances it's pretty low cost. Uh, so we've got what? 425,000 in cost right now. It'll be a little higher than that but what we're going to do is we're going to mothball all the mechs. So all these costs that we have right here for the mechs won't exist so all this will go away so we'll be stuck with our pilots which will probably have maybe five or so, four or five pilots. Um, We'll be stuck with the pilots and the Argo operating expensive costs, which won't be that much. So for the eight months, it might cost us uh, one and a half million maybe to get where we're going, something like that. So, you know, two million plus one and a half, three and a half million. So we've got right now about three million in funds to work with, roughly, uh, which I don't want to spend unless I absolutely have to. So that's the goal. That's what the infiltration series is going to be about. Um, and that's what we're going to go with it. So um, because if, if you look at, I mean, we could... Uh, toil around in clan space and fight clan clan on clan if we, we wanted to um, but it's just a matter of time I'm assuming before um, the uh, um, Tortuga Dominions claims clan space I don't know if they ever will who knows what's going on in the, in the combat but the idea is to just kind of ignore the map and pretend that we're um, going to be ahead of the vanguard of the clan units coming into the clans to uh, intersphere space. So that's the idea. So let's get started here. Uh, we don't have any pilots, but we can't do anything on this planet right now anyway. Uh, let's have a look at the hiring hall and see who we have here. See if we can get, oh, whoa, really? Uh, okay, we got one. Merchant ships, crew. This guy to buying items at shops, which is good. 20% reduced injury times. Um, cassowary and we got troll here periphery commander I think we're gonna pass on both of these two and we're gonna head off to the nearest star system so let's go to uh, navigation again and we're gonna head to here which is Hellgate 20 days away it's a half a skull planet I think that's the only really close like half skull world most of these are higher skull levels we're really going to have to manage our uh, early game to make sure we don't get clobbered here. Yeah, see a lot of these worlds are actually, you know what, uh, was it F2? I think it's F2. Yeah, there we go. So the bigger the circle, the uh, the higher the um, higher the rating. So this should be half skull, right? Yeah, half skull. And you have got a guy in there right now. Where are you? No, that's the half skull planet right there. Where's the other one? right here. So that's a half skull. That's one and a half. I can't get this guy. But there's only a couple here before we actually get out into periphery worlds here or to uh, jump route worlds. Uh, so we're going to stay here I think for a bit. Uh, probably jump between Hellgate and um, 
uh, Tiber here. And like I said, just get what we can. So that's how many, 33 days. So we don't want to go there. We want to go here. So we're going to jump there. But before we do, let's have a look at our ship upgrades and get started here. Power systems. Let's get these started. 10 days. And let's start our jump. All right, let's travel. Set in course. course now, All right. So I'm not really sure what to expect with this new Rogue Tech. Um, I've kind of kept up a little bit on the notes. Hey boss, we've just completed those upgrades. Top-notch work if you do say so yourself. Um, so like I said, I don't know what really to expect. Uh, let's get the second or training module. 30 points per day. How long does it take to put that in? 10 days. This is what? 10 days? Let's get this up and running. It's 700,000, but it needs to be done. But we'll get it, done. it has to be done. We'll just make sure we get that second or the uh, training module up before we leave the inner sphere here or the or leave the uh, clan space. So yeah, I mean, like I said, I haven't really read a lot of the notes and stuff. Flash points. So, you know, I'm going to be learning as I go along here. Doing the best I can. Feel free to drop any comments in the comment section. If you got any uh, pitfalls that you've run into playing the game, let me know. Um, most likely, I'm going to need to batch record uh, on the weekends. And I'll get into that in a little bit here. Let's have a look at the store here. So before we start the mission, I'll give you a, a rundown on kind of what's going on in my personal life. Active camouflage. So a lot of cool stuff. As much as I like to buy stuff here, unless there's something really cheap that we absolutely need, there's no point. Fire control system. Piloting support, A. Uh, plus one to piloting exceeds maximum skill level. That's kind of cool. Indirect. We don't really have a big missile mech we need indirect fire for. So no point. All right. We are here. Well, not contracts. We need some mech warriors first. Hey, Iron Hall. Trying to keep my cost down as much as I can. That's why I didn't spend the points yet. All right, Panara. Pilot's mood changes every day. Let's not get a guy with mood swing and a freaking. I know it's a tattoo across his forehead, but it looks like he's had <laughs> some kind of brain replacement surgery. All right. Uh, <laughs> Comstar Alkalite. Uh, plus one mech tech skill. That's kind of good. Plus one mech tech skill. Uh, decreased cost for Argo upgrades. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty much worth your weight in gold. New mech warriors available. Um, Commander. What do we got here? This guy's got guts. Spacer, increased injury time, but I don't want to go with any melee guys. Dallas, Nobra Air. Uh, mood changes based on funding. Moderate bonus to starting XP. Um, some good possibility. Giant killer reduced XP gain from... Co really? Reduced XP gain? Who would hire somebody like this? Yes, Alright, Dallas. Looks like you're up. 26.4. I know you're expensive, but... We need pilots, so uh, let's do this. New All right, available. we got our people now. Let's have a look at our barracks here. We're only going to field four to start. Uh, all right, commander, I like to go fours across the board to start with, and let's go with piloting in this one to start. Training complete. You bet. Uh, copy. And Helion, let's see if we can get you across. Why do you have reduced gunnery? Um, assassin? Maybe that's why? Yeah, man. 10% called shot bonus. Oh my god, okay. I'm kind of glad we kept her now. Let's lower the guts down. And uh, let's go... Let's go straight up gunnery. She's going to be a murdering angel. Let's go that right, route. Straight up gunnery. All right. Goofy. 
Is that the person's name that we hired? Goofy? I didn't think it was. Am I going crazy? I'll have to go back and look at this in the... Uh, I guess. Um, yes, unless this is the person I'm thinking... Oh, yeah, that's right, the Comstar guy. Right, okay. I didn't look at the name. I saw these, and I'm like, yeah, we need that really badly. Oh, man. Okay, whatever. Dallas. All right, All right Dallas, let's get you up here. Got a good starting amount of experience. Let's go fours across the board. Um, till we figure out where we want to place you. Most likely we're going to be going with gunnery and piloting for most of our pilots. We may go tactics on some people like Goofy. We might go tactics on because he is kind of Goofy. <laughs> we'll get him to be our spotter mech. Let's confirm that. Okay. So I think we're going to go that route. Well, not that we have a choice now, but that's the route we're going to go. Uh, let's have a look at the contracts. See what we got going on here. Now I may reduce the contract level. Yeah, see these are fine though. Wolves, what do we got here? Um, uh, well, hungry wolves to our door. We don't range a garrison to force the move in place, but we need to mercenary units to protect the factory until our forces arrive. Uh, defend base. I think that's probably a good place to start. The payout's terrible. Salvage is good, though. Stubborn surrender. We can do that after. Let's take the wolves first. We'll have some defensive units to help us out. So let's negotiate. And we're going to take a loss on this one, obviously, with the drop costs. Uh, but we definitely will go max salvage on this. Let's hope for some mech parts. All right, so let me go this route, and I think we will run. Who's going to be what here? Jenner 2C is a close range mech. I know normally I, I check all the mechs out and pull the jump jets and stuff off and add up armor and all that, but I think I'm going to leave it all as stock for now and see how we do with them. Um, so where is the, you know what? Goss Rifle, Assassin, Kit Fox, definitely for Helion. Uh, and the Mongoose, I believe, is our, it's our Beagle Probe mech, right? ER Large. Flea is, got the Guardian East, they're really a close range mech. Why it's got the LRM-5 on it, I guess just in case it needs to shoot at a distance, but Ah, uh, God. Jenner 2C. What does the Prana have again? It's only a 20 tonner though. ER small, ER medium. Tons of machine guns. We're going to have to well go those machine guns. It's going to overheat like crazy. All right, well, let's put... Uh, I'll take the Jenner 2C, why not? Flea, Mongoose. Let's do this. Firefly, sorry. <laughs> All right, we got enemy contacts already. Defend the factory. What do we got here? Scout reports incoming local government units. These would be the wolves. Have to hold them off till our employer force relieves us. Okay, we can do that. Really, eh? Well. So I'm to fight alongside you too, I guess. Initial support from our employer. Point defense systems. Point defense systems. Yeah. Standard, standard. Convoy coming in. Get those systems up and running. All right. So um, we got turret, ferret. So this should be an interesting fight, man. We got over here, Kit Fox, Firefly, escort APCs to defend base, to base defenses. Where are the APCs here? They are here. Okay, so What's the plan? plan is for you to move up and find out if we got any guys trailing these guys. Nothing. The 
Falcon. Okay, so while we're waiting for these guys to move, I um, just want to let you guys know why I've been away for over a month. Um, up until the beginning of September, uh, we had a crap ton of work come through our office. Uh, I, I don't even know how many corporate videos and commercials and stuff I edited. It was just ridiculous, the numbers. Um, yeah. Whoa, why are you way over here? Why are you... That's a little ridiculous. we got to get back. Can you actually get back? Or are you stuck on this hill? Uh, okay. Uh, that's a little weird placement, but whatever. Now, anyway, so I don't know how many videos I edited. It was just ridiculous. And then uh, by the time September started, um, the requests for demos for my youngest, who's uh, starting out as an actor, uh, just became ridiculous as well. Um, so we're doing a lot, doing a lot of demos on the weekends uh, for them, just so they can get the um, um, audition tapes and stuff in. That's kind of a weird ass smoke. Anyways, um, so yeah, we were just really, really busy, and on top of everything, uh, my CPAP um, started to crap out again. Uh, so I have been the past month or so excruciatingly exhausted. I have no idea what's what here now. So I'm guessing we're going to have guys coming this way. So let's set up over here. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been ridiculously exhausted lately. Um, and the reason why I've been playing Seven Days to Die mainly is because that's one of those games that it's like you get tired, you stop. Right? Pick it up where you left off. It doesn't really matter. But like if I'm tired in the middle of this, it's like I can't <laughs> I can't just stop. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess you could, but... Okay, let's get up here. Hi. Did you pick up a blip? I thought you picked up a blip there for a second. I guess not. Um, so I've been excruciatingly tired lately. And I've been playing Seven Days to Die, die in my uh, spare time. Alright, turrets online. Um... So I've been playing it in my spare time, and it's because, like I said, it's one of those games that you don't have to think. But for me to be able to record and talk and, like, do all that kind of stuff, it's just, it was really, really difficult. For that month, it was like I really couldn't do much. Um, and then I tried to get back into, uh, with uh, Covert Ops and stuff, and, you know, I got a few episodes done, but then once again, I got overwhelmed with work, and, uh, and now... Uh, as of last week, the uh, second editor that we've had uh, is no longer with us anymore. So it's just me. So now I've got like the work of two people, um, plus the fact that I'm really tired. It's just been really, really difficult lately to uh, try and get videos out. Um, and it's not that I haven't wanted to. It's not that I don't like the game. I do. I love playing the game. I love um, playing Rogue Tech. I think it's just one of the most uh, you know fantastic games I've ever played. However, it's just extremely difficult when I want to spend time doing it, but then just being so tired that I'm not really enjoying it. You know what I mean? And I, I, don't, I didn't want to just um, um, do it just for the sake of doing it. I want to do it because I like doing it. Uh, so that's kind of the reason why I've kind of stayed off that. I like playing Seven Days to Die too, um, but it's a lot more forgiving. Um, like if I'm tired playing this game and my mechs get wrecked, it's like... If, because I'm making stupid mistakes, it's like it, it's it's a lot more um, costing, I guess, more taxing to play than it is Seven Days to Die. If you die, you just respawn, no big deal. Go back and grab your stuff, start where you picked up where you left off, right? You don't lose anything really. Man, where's the enemy? You know, but with this game, it's like it, it's it's more invested, right? If I lose two mechs here in this battle. It's like I'm down to three. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like it's a big deal. So if I'm not awake while I'm playing this, oh, there we go. I'm not awake while we're, while I'm playing this, it's going to be a, a problem, right? Now I wish I had LRM 15s from Covert Ops, man. So we got a Cossack.
Okay, at least they got eyes on now. Um, I got a feeling they're going to probably pull themselves all the way over to this side. What else do we have here? Arctic Fox. So a 20 and a 30 tonner. I really need to get... Um, well, Dallas, you got to wait for uh, for Hillian. Yes, I don't want to leave you there by yourself. Let's group up. I, understand. I don't want to engage until the bulk of our other forces have engaged. I don't know what to expect. Like I said, this is like the first time I've been playing the most recent version of Rogue Tech, so I got to figure out how to... I know there's a command to get rid of these circles. I got to figure out what that is. Okay, let's reserve Dallas. I don't want to move these two too far up too, because I know probably reinforcements are going to be coming from this side down here. But I don't want to be stuck out in the middle of nowhere either. So yeah, that's kind of what's been going on with my life. I'm hoping, hoping, fingers crossed, to do batch recording us on weekends if I can. If I can get a block of like five hours, pull out five episodes of whatever, whether it's Rotec or... Um, seven days to die and like I say seven days to die is so much more forgiving because it's like I can just stop and then pick it up again like restart the game and pick it up again but I'm uh, I don't think if I'm correct I don't think we can actually save in the middle of a battle and come back in again in rogue tech I knew we could do it in battle tech but I don't know if it'll allow you to do that I'm guessing that was AMS yep nice So this week there'll probably be a couple of episodes of Battletech coming out for you guys. Uh, can we? Where is the way to get up on this side? Is there a way to get up here? I guess we have to go this way. Can we get up there though? Looks like we can. Like it looks like we can go up this way, maybe. Well, let's try it. Full speed sounds good. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm it's a little laggy may change my game settings I got everything on ultra right now or as high as it can go so I may lower them down a little bit reduce the CPU processing time like reducing the detail in the trees and stuff but yeah like I said I'll try and get a few episodes out this week um, hopefully one every two days maybe one every three days we'll see how it goes and then I'll just try and batch record stuff so that um, I can keep posting it uh, keep things going and then when it uh, hopefully when we hire a new editor and stuff at work then uh, I'll have more time to be able to uh, to devote to um, to uh, playing the game and uh, and stuff like that I don't think this mech is I don't think we're gonna be able to get up here I don't think she's gonna be able to get up here that's a weird start location I gotta say Drop some lerms on this guy. Because we can. At 29%, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, zero hits. Yeah, at least we're in the game. Kind of. So I don't know if Helian's going to be able to get up. Reporting. How are these guys going to get up? Is there a way up here? It doesn't look that way. Okay. Be there in a jet. This is when I wish I had like lots of LRMs, man. Stop with the smoke coming off these guys. So are these circles based on ECM or I remember reading somewhere there's a command to take them off. I don't know. I can't remember. If you guys know, drop it in the comment section. If it's not off the next episode, it'll be off the one after that or the one after that. One of the two, I'll figure it out. At some point, can we get the streaks on these guys? Because we can, of course not. Let's move over here. 
Maybe they'll move into a position where we can fire at them. It's kind of stinky with no uh, no missile weapons. Or indirect fire, that is. Okay, we got somebody else. What do we got down here? Urban mech. All right. Now, I know I can jump down there in the Jenner. And I might just do that. Moscow day, eh? cool. See, this is where I wish I could, you know, field two lances. Like we have a lot of defenders. There's got to be a whole regiment or something attacking us. Maybe not a regiment, a couple of companies anyway. But if they can't get up, like if I can't get up here. and they can't get up, then how is attacking this base going to work? Like we might be able to get up this way, maybe? I'm here. Um, let's just drop some lerms on this guy, man. Keep firing at the Cossacks since everybody else is. Ah, one hit, not bad. It's a mash truck. It's a mash truck. Moving into combat for whatever reason. What are these guys? Oh, these are the uh, choppers. The choppers. Right here. Get to the chopper. Okay, we can get up here. Excellent. Let's get that Goss rifle over here. I think I'm going to jump down. Oh, I don't know if I'll jump down with the streaks. It just seems if I do that, it's just going to be a big deal. Now, can these choppers get down there? I wonder how the movement works with these guys. Like, is it considered a jump that they can jump down here? Like, they should just be able to fly right over the edge and attack. But I know game mechanics, you kind of have to work within game mechanics, right? Well, once again, kudos to the Rogue Tech team. You guys, just incredible, incredible work. One thing I'd like to see, I don't know if you guys ever played the game Civ 3. It's really old, like 97, 98 or something like that. Um, and I played that game a tremendous amount. I even created my own mod for it. It's act actually the, uh, I started a uh, campaign on the, <laughs> with the mod I made uh, on my, um, YouTube channel here. I never got that far with it because it's it takes a once again it takes a long time to play. I've got it on my second machine. At some point, I'll probably go back to it. But um, the thing about Civ 3 is when the uh, AI is moving, um, you can set it so that it doesn't show you the movement. It just kind of go. They just basically cut from one spot to the next wherever they move to. So rather than having to watch the vehicles all moving, right, it could just figure out where they're going to go and then just place it there instantly. If, especially if it's not firing, right? You sh like, and and there's, since there's no opportunity fire or anything like that, then there's no need to like show you the move. So it should just be a quick cut. Uh, that might actually speed things up. I don't know if they can actually do that or not, but because when the AI, like when I was playing that game, the AI had like hundreds and hundreds of units, right? The last thing you want to do is watch every single unit move one <laughs> one square. It's like you rather just watch the whole stack. It's kind of, whoop. Ow, hit my hand on the uh, microphone. Watch the whole stack kind of just, you know, move from one position to the next. Saves so much time. Like that particular animation there. We didn't need to see that. He's firing. You could just cut to that location and then fire. Right? Especially in big battles. Like we have a... a of course you are. Okay, so down over there. And there's probably some guys back there too. So let's rotate the Kid Fox and the Firefly over there. You know what? I think all of us are going to go over there and engage. I got a feeling they're going to come up from here. 
So we're just going to all shift over and engage because these guys can't get up that hill that I can see anyway. So we're just going to shift everybody over here and engage down here. It's going to be a free-for-all though because i got a feeling all the other mechs will shift over that way too. But we'll see what happens. Hoping we get some good kills here. And yeah, I don't think we're going to be taking a second mission today because this is going to be moving pretty darn slow. Oh, it's only seven more rounds, so we have to kill something. You know what I mean? Like, or else we're not going to get any salvage at all. Something's got to die. Because I don't know how they're going to destroy this base unless they have, like, mediums or heavy mechs that just showed up all of a sudden that can actually fire a long distance. Because they're just not going to do anything. Okay, come on. Working on the chopper of math. Nope. Rotunda, we got stuff behind us. Cool. Okay. So maybe the Firefly and the uh, and he, or Dallas and Helian could take on those guys over there. I want to get my streaks on something though. Mortar technical pickup truck with a mortar in the back some kind of recoilless rifle or some shit like that with a bunch of yahoos all right yes, Commander. okay no idea what this thing's got probably want to move a fair bit if we can I don't want to be in the open though we need that superior ablat of armor uh, let's move this way move order one Chevron huh what do we got Wow well you won't hit if you don't shoot let's fire whole lot of nothing so why is there smoke coming off these guys? Is that supposed to be exhaust? Because we can lose that. We don't need exhaust. Like, I've got puffs of smoke too. Maybe it's supposed to be fog or I don't know. I'll try and reduce some of the processing. Allied turn. So anyway, life for me has been uh, pretty tough the past little while. Well, not really tough. I don't want to say tough. Tiring. Exhausting. You can get through it without a problem. It's just that you come home, you know, you take a nap, and then you get up, and you eat dinner, spend some time with the family. Then you get upstairs to play, and you stare at the screen, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to record something. And then you're like, no, I'm not. I'm too fucking tired. I can't even talk. I'm too tired. <laughs> like, you know, you, like, I could have recorded so many episodes where I just wasn't talking. And I mean, if you guys are fine with that, if you want to just see episodes where, like, I'm not talking and you, I'm just playing the game, I'm more than happy to record what I do, but, like, I'm I'm assuming it's going to just seem really, really boring for you guys just to watch some dude. Ooh, yes. You certainly did, assassin. Well, at least we got some uh, salvage, no matter how horrible it probably is. But yeah, like I said, if you guys want to watch me play without talking or barely talking at all or talking like I'm a zombie you know feel free to drop in the comment section I can just record whatever limited playing I'm doing and just post it if you're happy seeing that um, I almost kind of thought about doing that for uh, some of the seven days to die stuff that I've been doing just on on the side when I'm tired you know just simple base building and whatever just like design and whatever running whatever horde nights could do that too. Even this, I could start a different series where it's like, you know, the zombie series where I just... Ooh, we could go after these guys, couldn't we? That should give me enough... Uh, let's try this. That should give me enough stealth, I think. The question is, am I going to hit? Only one way to find out, huh? All right, what do we got here? Urban mech. A little better on this guy. 
and I would rather think I would rather have Arctic Fox Arctic Fox parts anyway. We're only going to fire what we're going to use, so yeah, a little bit, not bad. Hi, right, Goofy. I don't think I ever mentioned this, but when I was uh, when I went to high school, um, a bunch of people gave me the nickname Goofy. I never knew about it until like I was like finishing high school, <laughs> and the reason why uh, he's going to move over here. The reason why I, um, they gave it to me, I, 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 the weird thing is, is at first I was kind of like upset about it, and then I was like, I took a look at myself in the mirror, and then how I laughed, and I was like, I totally look like fucking. I must have totally looked like Goofy, and that's why they call me Goofy. I totally get it. I totally get it. It's just funny. Anyway. Uh, tab, that should do it, right? There we go. Oh, that's a good chance to hit. Well, one hit. But yeah, you know, it's funny the things you... Uh, it's the f it's funny the things you learn of that uh, people say behind your back sometimes. Anyway, I was kind of a weird kid, so it's like you know when you're on spectrum and spectrum, you're ADHD and you have no idea that you're ADHD and on spectrum. It's like I completely understand why people thought I was like weird as hell. But it's a good thing all my friends were the same way, so <laughs> that's just fine. Come on, finish up this ferret. I don't want him to have one of those tag arrow thingies. Well, if he does have one and we finish him up, I definitely want it. I never did get a chance to use that in Covert Ops, man. I loaded it up on the Stinger, had it ready to go, but I couldn't get the darn game, I couldn't get the, the mission to launch no matter what I did. It was like five times I tried to get the thing working and it just didn't work. Ripper. Come on, man. Rip him a new one. So I picked up four chevrons of evasion over here from jumping, eh? Not too bad, I guess. I like the, I like the, the fact that the cockpits have got like kind of like glowiness now to them. But I mean, the last, the last thing you want though is to have like a glowing cockpit. You'd rather have it like tinted glass or some shit like that, so that or one-way glass so that they can't see in, but you can see out. You know, with like with a HUD that's suspended in the Xenon mist, as they would say in Last Starfighter. Come on, shoot him. Finish him up. You can do it. Make any calculations. E equals MC squared. Pi R squared. Fire. <laughs> hey, time today. Anytime today. I think we'll avoid base defenses next time. All that for that, huh? Thanks for showing up. Thanks for showing up. Where are all your LRMs, guys? Come on. We couldn't get four LRM turrets, huh? Maxim hover transport. Still cool looking though, with the cockpit like that. Gotta say, it's cool looking. Ooh, someone's taking some hits. Is he gone? Oh, that was the ferret. Was it the ferret? I think it was the ferret that got destroyed. Six rounds remaining. A uh, scout. Infiltrator. Oh, that's a good chances to hit. We'll take it. Yes. Enjoy. Engaging jump jets. We're just going to park ourselves back here. A little bit of heat, but we can wait for a turn and then jump back in. A little bit of heat, a little bit of instability. 
Mobile Army Surgical Headquarters. Or, well, a hospital, I guess, but... Come on, let's go, guys. Okay, Dallas. Now, I'm hoping it was just two guys there, but I think we really, really need to find out if there is... Where are you? You're right there. How far can you jump? Not very far. Let's jump over here, though. I think we need to find out if there's more guys coming from this direction, which I got a feeling there is. So let's drop some missed skulls. I can't hit this guy? Cossack's taking some damage, so let's go after the Cossack. Might get one hit on him. Yeah, we got one. Big four points. Four points is four points, is what I gotta say. Yeah. Yes, Commander. Should have gone half and half coin and stuff. Coin and salvage. Oof. Can't even get out of... Really? Okay, we can get all the way over here, though. And you got the uh, Beagle Probe. Beagle Probe active. But not finding the goddamn thing. Yeah, this is one of those battles that they should have changed it out for like 20 rounds or something. Because I can't see... I, I mean, I guess... You know, if this was a, a, a five skull mission and it was all heavies and assaults, it would be a completely different story because they'd just be launching missiles like crazy arrow systems, like long times. It would just be insane, right? I totally get that. But at this low level, there really isn't much these guys can do. At least it doesn't seem that, you know? And even the heavies and the assaults, they'd have to get eyes on these buildings and then launch, right? From a distance, which they could easily do. But then, like, because no, they're not going to be able to jump up here. All the heavies and assaults aren't going to have jump jets. They'd have to have a couple of fast mediums with jump jets and, like, stealth to get eyes on the buildings, and then they could just kill them from a distance. Wouldn't take much. I mean, that's what I would do. Or they could just take off and nuke the site from orbit, orbit just to be sure. Ooh. See ya. So I'm thinking he's got like an AC-10 on him or something? He's got a big autocannon anyway. I don't know what kind of autocannon it is, but I don't want to be around when he's firing it. Uh, yeah, let's keep moving this way. So I think Infiltrator is going to have to spend a turn just sitting there. Cool off. What is that smoke? They're not steam powered. I mean, come on. Well, maybe they are. I don't know. It's, has Jade Falcon been bombed back into the the, uh, <laughs> the uh, steam age? Or the industrial age, I guess? Maybe they're all steam powered vehicles now. So that's like three targets. Oh, that was a flea. Moving up the gully. So they do have guys over here. Still. We got a helicopter. We got a turret. Is he going after them? Or where's he going? No, he's going... I don't know where he's going. This is not the map to make this uh, mission like this. The fact that we're all up on this cliff, it's like they can't even get up here. But, you know, whatever. Just thankful for the for the larger battles now. Ferret on his way back over. Does anybody know if we can get vehicles yet? If you do, throw a comment in the comment section down below. What they should do is put vehicles for sale. So you can't get them off the battlefield. You don't get it. All you get is the components. You don't get any any pieces of the vehicle. But they they might have a whole vehicle for sale in the uh, in the store. 
that would be kind of cool and then you know you can make it you know priced relatively half decent like don't make it definitely don't make it cheap Because, I mean, vehicles in their way do have some advantages, like faster movement. For some of them, anyway, like scout vehicles. Alright, Goof, let's get you... Up here, spotting somebody. Okay, that gives me a line on somebody, but does it allow me to shoot? Maybe they're out of range. Will ya? Well, I know it, but you're not there yet. Come on, buddy. Alright, what do we got back here? Okay, maybe it's waiting to fire. If they get eyes on. But at least we can drop some lerms on his ass if we have to. All five of them. Yeah, see, no one can fire because we don't have any indirect, right? So the guys down below can't shoot us, and we can't shoot them because we <laughs> can't see each other. We all got direct weaponry. All right, Dallas. Commander? Yeah, there was a flea down here somewhere. Quick Get your stability back if you can. I guess you ran, so probably not. Probably not. We're gonna back you up with uh, Helion, though. Goofy's got tons of vehicles on his side. He doesn't really need to do much over there. But we're gonna need more than that one helicopter kill <laughs> if we're gonna make this worthwhile. Oh, sorry, we got the Rotunda scout car too. Be nice to be able to walk out of this unscathed. I mean, hell, I think we probably could have all just stood in here and not done anything. Taken all cash, stood in the middle of the buildings and, you know, just walked away with the money. Okay, so you need to wait a turn. Just going to brace here. Get our stability back. Because we're going to jump over there in a minute. Next turn we'll jump over. See if we can capitalize on getting that getting that Kit Fox down some more. I don't know what kind of armor he's got. Kit Fox are what, 30 tons? 35? 30 tons. Arctic Fox, sorry. No idea what he's got left. Alright, Helion. Get over here and support uh, Dallas, please. Nicely done. Get that Gauss rifle over here. Like we've only fired a handful of rounds. Yeah, so I don't know. I just really, really, really like this new Rogue Tech. I mean, the last version was really nice too. It was quicker in gameplay. That's the one thing I will say about the last version. But I'm sure, you know, once they get their optimizations down and stuff, um, it'll be a lot faster. But there's so much going on, right? I understand why the game is a lot slower now. But I think what we'll do from now on, so we're not going to take base defense missions. Anytime we have to defend, we're just going to avoid it. We're just going to go for one-on-one -on -one fights. I mean, base assaults too, we could do that. It's a warrior and something or other. Probably a, uh, looks like a, uh, what's it called? Oh my god, a locust, but it's probably a flea or power armor or something. Allied turn. Allied turn. Where are you guys going?
There's a 7-Eleven over, over there that's open. They're just going to go over and get something to eat. Bring me back some gummy bears, guys. What do we got? Locust, yeah. See, they can't get up. It's such a worthless mission because they can't get up here to fight. You know what it is? I think uh, because the map is bigger, um, it's no longer cut off here where they would spawn like right on the mountain or right on the hill there. So um, they're stuck in the valley now. Same thing over here. I think the guy that spawned over here is stuck down here. He's got to go all the way up and around. That's why they come up and attack us. Come on. So anyway, yeah, once I, I'm hoping we get some, you know, what? if the games are going to be this slow, I think I'm going to have to not use the rule of uh, um, not choosing mech parts as salvage for the first little bit. I think we're going to have to do, choose some mech parts. Uh, let's reserve. Because I want to be able to jump in and fire and then jump out again. Or, sorry, jump in, fire, fire and jump out. Yeah, finally we hit somebody. Good job. Warrior, come out and play, yay. So he's up on the cliff already. I guess because they don't, heli the uh, helicopters probably don't see terrain like this as a, or it's considered a jump for them. I don't know. I'd like to know how they coded that. It's interesting. Because you would think these mechs would probably be able to scale this. I mean, the one with arms anyway. Like arms and hands, they'd be able to scale the cliff. Either that, or they should, or they should uh, designate lances that are jump-capable lances for missions like this. So they maybe have one support unit that's not jump-capable that has like LRMs or something, and then they've got uh, three other mechs that are all jump-capable. Because this battle would be completely different if those mechs had all jumped up here. I mean, they still would have lost because they were outnumbered, but it would have been a different battle because they wouldn't just be standing. Like, everyone's just standing around now, you know what I mean? Either that or force it to be medium lances or something. But at half skull, I mean, we can't ask for much, right? Can't ask for much at half skull. Uh, okay, Goofy. Ignore that shiz over there. Can you get over here to shoot these guys? Wow, that's some pretty good movement, man. Get to the chopper. Let's do it. That'll give us... Oh, actually, you know what? What is it up here? We can still shoot him. We're in the woods. Better off up here. Gotta go. I'll take whatever salvage we can get, bud. Just shoot this guy, will ya? He's already taking a side hit. Let's hope the ER large hits. Ah, well. Had to try it. No, it didn't, but that's all right. Didn't expect it to, buddy. Didn't expect it to. You still get paid. <laughs> that's all that matters. But he's taking internal structure damage. I'm wondering if the LRM-5 from uh, Dallas will do anything. If we can get a lucky hit on the side, maybe it'll finish it off. Or the wheeled APC could do it for us. With the steam smoke coming out of the top of it. I don't know what the hell's going on with that, but whatever. She's got to walk anyway. Can you, uh... Are you at a range? I guess that's what it... Oh, no, not at a range. Unstable. Let's get lucky. 
Still can't target that thing. All right. 0.5 or 0.9, eh? Yeah, you never know. Negative damage. Repeat. Negative damage. I can tell you from first first-hand experience that uh, odds don't always necessarily matter. I'm sure I told this story before, but I was playing a game of Civ 4, and there's a mod was called Fall from Heaven. It was created by a mod creator, and I wish I could remember the, his name, but uh, it was a full overhaul of Civ 4, and it was his his um, pantheon of gods and his storyline, and it was just amazing. Every Civ was different. There was nothing alike between any of them. Um, magic and all kinds of technology. It was really, really cool. Anyway, um, in that mod you could have heroes and um, I had one hero that was like had like a 99.9% .9 chance of killing just about anything it attacked it was like it was such a high level hero had no problem fighting anything yep. let's see if we can find this guy over here anyways he ends up he was just murdering stacks of enemies and ends up attacking some lone guy in the middle of nowhere and lost a 0.01% chance to lose the battle and he lost I, I, I must have sat there for five minutes thinking, how is that possible? But it's possible. You got a zero point or a point zero one chance of failure. You can still fail. The possibility is there. It's very, very remote, but it's still there. And I sure as hell lost. So ever since that moment, I realized that odds, you know, as, as good as they may seem, like even like a 5% chance of, of, you know, losing is still a 5% chance and it's very real chance that you could lose you know that's why I like odds of like down to 1% or lower I guess that's why science likes your p-values less than 5 right or I guess I mean I guess it depends on what their uh, I guess it really depends on what their uh, the um, study or whatever it is you, know, you I mean you want it as low as possible but you know less than 0.5 or whatever you can get it down to Now, does this say, is this, that's the Arctic Fox, that's the guy we want. Now, is that a back shot? Looks like it's a back shot. We'll take it, 43% chance, you bet. Ooh, sweetness. Enemy net. Critical damage detected. Come on, bail out. Nah. Well, at least we get to fire and maneuver again. But yeah, man, if you guys, I don't know, like I said, Civ 3, Civ 4, Civ 4, Fall from Heaven, if you guys have Civ 4, and you like that kind of, um, you know, world building and tactics and strategy types of games, Civ 4, Fall from Heaven, the mod is, it, it was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. It's like you could play as, you know, um, a race that their whole purpose is to completely destroy the world. Like that was their purpose, and they, they, in order to bring about the end, their I, their uh, goal was to summon this demon into the into the world that would start as its own sieve. But then it, this terrain became hell terrain, and it was spread across the map, and turned the whole map into hell terrain, unless you could fight 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 it off somehow. Um, and the whole game dynamic was if if you summon them in, you could either continue on as the race that you were, or you could change your leadership to the, the to be that demon leader and start up as that, that Civ as it came in. And then once he entered the world, the good guys could then summon um, this other, uh, like a, an angel to the world, right? And they had the option to, to switch over to the angel side, right? Now, the brilliant thing is that there was like a good, evil, and neutral in the world. And once the demon was summoned, as soon as an evil unit was killed, it gets res it would respawn as a uh, demon in the actual demon guy's army, right? And if and if a good unit died, it would actually respawn in the angel's army. So you'd have these two new sieves on the map board who are constantly gaining new units, and unless you have some way to fight them, they just like they obviously hate each other, right? But unless you have some way to fight against that, it just became an increasingly difficult battle, right? So. Like the the whole dynamic behind the game was just phenomenal, just absolutely phenomenal. They had something called the. Um, it was the. Uh, let's get into here. Um, Armageddon counter. So all the bad stuff that happened would increase the Armageddon counter. Uh, and all the wait, 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 wait! I had a chance to hit this guy. 
and now it's saying I don't. <sighs> Screw you. Your armor it is. Yeah. Anyway, um, where was I going with that? I can't even remember now. Um, oh yeah, the Armageddon counter. So, you know, as good units or good things happen, the Armageddon, Armageddon counter would go down. Bad things ha happen, the Armageddon counter would go up. And if the Armageddon counter reached 100, uh, that demon automatically spawned in the world. Um, and everything just starts going crazy. Like like uh, random demons will be summoned on the planet. Like it just gets nuts, right? So the whole goal is to avoid that from happening as best you can. Um, and then there's just, if you play without that, like you could leave the Armageddon counter off and just play a regular game. So there's like dwarves and there's elves. There's all different, different uh, races on the planet as well. And they've all got a different game dynamic. You know, one guy, one unit, the orcs, they start off allied with the barbarians. So the barbarians won't attack them. Uh, up until a certain point, and then the barbarians will then become opposed to them. But it's just, you know, come on, kill him. Damn it. Looks like I've got a tag on him, though. Um, but yeah, that was kind of cool. Uh, the whole dynamic behind the game was, was pretty pretty fantastic, i got to say. All right, Helion. We haven't spotted that guy over here. Now, I know there was a guy over here. There was a flea or something. Or a firefly or some shiz like that down here. Gonna keep looking for him. I don't see him. Maybe he's not here. I could be wrong. And then I started playing Civ Five. Um, Civ Five was okay. It was a different. It was a far different uh, play style, play experience. Okay, is this the Arctic Fox? No, where is he? Oh, he moved. Oh. Engaging jump jets. Don't like doing this. How instead? Oh, no, where? Ah, uh, two insta instability. Did we lose the ability to target him now? We did. Okay, not liking that. Kind of lied to me there. What the hell? It lied to me. Yeah, I started playing Civ Five, but the whole thing I, think, the thing I didn't like about Civ Five is that you couldn't stack units. It seemed it always seemed a little weird that units couldn't be stacked. And um, one of the things that I think, f if I remember correctly, I think it was Fall from Heaven that did this. They had the, um, there was a, uh, let me see, hang on a second, let me see where I can get here. They had a um, collateral damage rule, so that if you had a stack of guys, um, and the uh, unit they were using could cause collateral damage, it would cause multiple like damage like multiple damage to you, different units in the stack. Okay, that's the urban. Let's go after the warrior. So yeah, I mean, it was like you know, it, that kind of made sense because then you didn't want to put all your units in one stack. Although you you always did anyway because that was the only way to protect them. But. Uh, yeah, Civ Five. I wasn't really. I mean, it was fun for a while, but it really didn't have the longevity of like Civ Three or Civ Four. And I know a lot of people had like the the uh, um, formula. I guess Civ Three and Civ Four play where you would uh, build your cities close together and then spread them out a little later on. So I never played like that. Um, I always played my own way. It made it more challenging. Uh, for me, it was never about winning. It was always about um, how difficult the game was, how interesting it became. You know, I like I always used to like to try and get to the the uh, um, industrial era. For me, that the, the World War II era was always the best. That's why when the mod I created for Civ Three, it was designed to basically get to the industrial era, which was around World War World War One, World War Two, and then the game would drag out a long period of time in that area in that era. And it, for me, it was just designed because that's the most fun, right? Um, and I gave the AI a whole bunch of bonuses to help them out in that era. Um, 
so that you know because they, they would always just build the same of same unit all the time whatever the most powerful offensive unit and the most powerful defensive unit um, but I gave them buildings and stuff that would just generate other units every certain uh, certain amount of time so they were really cheap to build and gave them uh, happiness bonuses but it would give them you know uh, different uh, vehicles different units um, just to make the whole game more interesting so if they were you know if, they, if all they did was mass produce tanks what I did was made it so that you could only build a tank every five turns or every ten I think it was five turns something like that to limit the amount of armored vehicles they could they could build they, you couldn't actually just build them in a city you had to have like a uh, an armored factory so that it would produce the tank uh, but then the so that the factory would make the ta the tank every five turns but then the AI could then focus on building infantry so that when you're like in the World War one era um, the AI is constantly producing infantry and machine gunners and stuff like that to defend themselves, but then they get only X amount of tanks, right? So it wasn't like tons of tanks and, and a couple of machine gunners, which was like ridiculous. It was a bunch of tanks, tons of infantry and some machine gunners. So it was like kind of really, really, really balanced, made the game really fun. And I did the same thing with the Navy too, so that they, uh, you know, certain types of battleships could be built um, by specific buildings. So. And I'm rambling now because I got like <laughs> just guys. We're only on a round. <laughs> got three rounds left. I got nothing to say. We haven't. We we killed like two vehicles. <laughs> it's gonna be open warfare from now on. Next, the next mission, next episode will be the uh, that one skull mission. We got a I got. I got I gotta take some gambles in that last round to see if we can get some more stuff because we're not gonna... I don't even think there's gonna be even 17 pieces of salvage. Unless we can kill that Kit Fox. Or not... Sorry, the Arctic Fox. Yeah, I don't think there's a vehicle back there though. Or a... Uh, where Helion is, I don't, I don't know. I thought I saw a mech moving over there, but maybe it was this guy, the locust down here, moving through this valley. I know I briefly saw it. I thought for sure there was one over there, but these guys are just really, really confused. I should just start pressing F buttons to see if these uh, circles go away. All right, my turn. My turn. Still can't see this guy. Well, I braced, so... What do you think? Should we risk it for the biscuit? What's this guy? Urban mech? I mean, we could go... Worst case scenario, we shoot him in the back. Yeah, we can't see this guy. Of course we can't. Well, that's not too good, is it? All weapons committed. Oh my god, they all missed. <laughs> 16 shots at 30% and not one of them fired. <laughs> oh my god, I suck. <laughs> Talk about shy trigger finger. Holy moly. I just, I just I just don't want to waste the ammo. I know it's a streak and it's only going to fire if it's going to hit, but still, it's just kind of funny, don't you think? All right, alien, you got what two turns left? Right here. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that mech is either gone back this way, which I think this turret would have seen him here, or he's down here somewhere if he's anywhere, which we can't get to. I don't know. Uh, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. I still can't get over having 16 shots at 30% and not one of them fire. But you see what I mean though, right? About odds? It's like 0.01% chance to die and you die. 
and you got 16 chances at 30% chance each, so you think, you would think that you would get what? You know, three, four, five hits probably? Nothing. It's like Yukon Cornelius, man. Nothing. Come on. Move it, move it. I'm wondering if, because I noticed on the board there doesn't seem to be a lot of people playing. Um, I'm wondering if the slow turns like this are starting to turn people off from Rotec. That's a possibility. Once they get optimized, it might be a little better. I'm not sure who chose the Tortuga Dominions, but damn. They've done a lot of work flipping planets the past month or so. All right, Dallas. I'm here. Every time I say, every time, I, every time I see the the word or the name Dallas, I'm just I keep thinking of uh, Dallas from uh, Alien. Moving at full throttle. Oh, you're behind the hill, and that's really good. Or the turret be taking damage already. We could shoot at it again and hopefully we get lucky, but I think the warrior is probably closer to dying. 19%, maybe we get one. Or maybe we don't get any. We'll leave it up to Goofy. Yeah, well, no love on that strike. Yeah, well, no love on, no, <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you get away with that one just this one time. Considering I can't hit with like 16 at 30% chance. Somebody shoot the damn chopper down. They should, um, I don't know, I don't know if they'll ever do this, but Battletech should do a level editor. I mean, or a map, just a map editor even. I don't know if their their current um, editor is like. Why can't we see that? Oh right, because yeah, I somehow moved, so I couldn't see it. Let's get into here. Have no doubt, it will be done. Uh huh. Kill this sucker for me, will you? Look at those chances. If you don't kill this thing, you're fired. Thank you. Not that we're gonna get <laughs> much out of that. But at least we get something. Oh, we're not even going to be able to cover our drop costs. Oh man. Oh, I think we just. I think it was. I think we were making eighty thousand. I think our drop costs were seventy-eight or something like that. So I think we'll be okay. At least I'm pretty sure that's what it was. We got two rounds. I guess it's one round after this one. So if Infiltrator doesn't kill something, chances are we're not going to get anything. Where are you going? Come on. Get into the battle. Maybe there is somebody over there. I don't know. Well, this is the easiest tactical battle I've ever played. We could have just stood in the center there for 10 turns, like I said. Oh, boy. So, I don't know. We'll have to see how this goes. Like I said, the, the goal is to head to the Inner Sphere once we get two lances. But we'll see how it is. I mean, like, if the combats are going to be this long, I'm really gonna have to select the battles that we're gonna f be facing. I want to. Oh, I took some damage. Just stop. You're embarrassing yourself. Yeah, but you're taking damage, buddy. I was. We were gonna try and get out of here un unscathed. All right, last round. Anyway. Oh, so they. They changed the uh, 
the buildings. Two must survive, five remain. So they, I guess they only have to kill... Oh, wait, if they kill four buildings, we lose. That's right. That's right. How might I help? You can get your asteroid over here and maybe shoot something. On goose. There's the Octo Fox. Okay, now he's got some good. Oh, we could CT this guy. ER large, 40%. Let's get him. Target. Yes! Oh, yes! Thank you. That would be a kill. Yes, we get, at least get some salvage now. Take back all the negative things about I said about you, goof. Okay, now. Urban Mech is. Oh, look at the back of this guy. Cossack. Guess we can't get the back of that Urban Mech, eh? Oh. I don't want to jump because of the instability. We can get the back of the Urban Mech. Eighty-four! Well, I don't think we can kill him. We can certainly do a lot of damage. Ooh! Should have jumped down there before. Now we can get the LRM-5 working. There's that flea. I knew it was over there. There, I guess they're trying to make that last push here. Yeah, we can't kill this guy. Yeah, unfortunately. We might be able to hit this torso and blow his other arm off, but... That won't show up in salvage, I don't think, so it won't matter. Unless he gets panics and bails out, but I haven't seen any any idea that he's panicking or anything. He goes on turn four. I just really hope he doesn't turn around and put that friggin' auto cannon through my head. I got four chevrons of evasion. Hopefully that's enough. Where are you, girl? Now, where is that guy? We did, you did, did see him. He's here somewhere. I don't know. I'm going to move back here. Well, that was a waste of a kit fox for a battle, eh? So we got one left. Dallas. Dallas Fort Worth. Okay, Dallas, let's see what you can do here. Gonna stay in the open gives us a better chance to hit, but we'll shoot this guy. Forty-eight percent chance. Okay, looks like it was one hit. Where are you guys going? So painful. Was that a centurion? something. At least it looked like it said Centurion. Cattle Master. Never mind. 
know. I'm going to mistake a cattle master for a centurion. Okay, that guy, I can see steam coming off because he's probably got a, a steam-powered engine. Yeah, a little short. Coming up with a whole lot of nothing. So we did take a bit of damage. Yes. There it is, folks. Mission successful. All right, so it looks like I'm going to have to do a lot of editing on this episode. Pay out 45000 which we did make a little bit of C-bills, only because we got some uh, some bonuses here for uh, getting our um, our objectives complete. Let's see what we got here. And we took a little bit of damage on the mongoose, I think. A couple of points here or there. So not bad overall. And what else do we got here? So we're going to take the Arctic Fox part. Heavy rocket launcher 5, two of them, large laser, LBX 10. Basic cockpit. Do we want to take two combustion engines, fire control system standard, double heat sinks, omnipods. See that once again, standard fusion engine. Really? 200. Uh, I don't really know enough about the new stuff. So this is worth 250. Am I looking for stuff to sell or 1.2? I mean, we could sell that. Um, but I'm thinking we should probably take some stuff that we can re like repair our mechs with. Well, the LB-10X, how much does that weigh? 11 tons. It's a little heavy for the lighter mechs that we have. But a large laser and a medium laser we could always use in the future. And the standard cockpits, like these things are okay. But we're not going to be melee. One accuracy arm out of weapons. We have to have... I don't know. I'm going to take what I have. Let me know in the comments below, guys. What do you think about the Omnipart lower arms and stuff? Should I be taking these? I don't know. I think we'll leave it with what we got here. I'm just looking for replacement parts at this point. This we can sell. All right, let's confirm this. Okay, LB-10X we did get. SRM-2, basic cockpit, another core that we can sell. Regular heat sink. Three double heat sinks. That's awesome. Fusion engine is sellable. Oh, we got the LB-10X ammo, which is awesome. So that's actually, a, I think that's a pretty good roll out of there. We didn't get any of the arms, but that's fine. All right, well, we didn't take any damage. Well, that's interesting. I thought we did for sure, but that's a whole lot of nothing. All right, we got six days to heal our guys up. And I think, do we have any, our engineering still going, right? We chose something. Or no, we didn't. We just got here, right? So let's take this automation to get our second repair bay working at uh, 100%. And it's a little bit cheaper because we have our... Uh, one pilot that actually lowers the costs for this. That's cool. So we'll purchase this six days. Nice. Get that going, and then we'll take the uh, we'll take the uh, training module. All right. So I'm going to end the episode here, guys. Uh, I'm sorry that mission took so long, but like I said, we'll avoid taking the base defense missions until later uh, when we have heavier mechs and more long range missiles and stuff. As we get, get a little bit more action into play. I was hoping that was going to be a good good mission to start with, but, um, you know, I guess it was tame enough that we didn't take any damage and get a little bit of a feel for the game. All right, so I'm going to end the episode here. If you enjoyed it, if, uh, please drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. You can drop any comments in the comment section down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.